Guys, have you ever seen a video on maybe Twitter or YouTube and when you saw the video you thought, poof, I know exactly what's happened here. Maybe you've even written a comment about it and then you found out that what actually happened was something completely different? Well, in today's video I'm going to have a look at one of the more viral aviation clips that have hit YouTube during the last few years. They have more than 6 million views at the moment and uh, it was shot by a really good flight spotter channel called Bristol Cardiff Airport. Link to the original clip down here that you can have a look at it for yourself. And I bet that at the end of this video you're gonna have one of those hmm moments. Stay tuned. Okay, so this clip was taken back in 2016 and it has been doing its rounds on the internet ever since. And anytime that it pops up in the Twitter feed or indeed here on the original YouTube video, uh, it gets a shower of comments from people who have opinions about what these pilots are doing. All right, And I can tell you that there are very few positive comments. Uh, most of them are questioning the professionalism of these pilots, what they're doing, how they can be allowed to fly, things like that. So let's have a look at the, uh, the clip first and see what happens. Okay, so this looks like a Turkish Airlines Airbus A330. This video, by the way, is shot in Frankfurt, Maine, in Germany. Okay, the landing runway use is runway 07 right, which is where it's touching down right now. And the takeoff runway uh, is runway 1. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to be fully in agreement here that this looks very strange. This is definitely not your everyday kind of takeoff, that's for sure. Uh, so what we're seeing here basically is um, a Royal Air Maroc Boeing 737, either a 500 or a 700, a shorter variant of the 737 anyway. And the, the first part of the takeoff rule looks completely normal. Um, they get up to the point where they start to rotate. They rotate nice and slowly with about approximation two to three degrees per second but then when they come to the attitude where they should normally take off which is about nine degrees nothing happens you can see that they kind of stop at that attitude you can also see on the elevator that they're putting in further inputs to try to get the aircraft to rotate further but it, it doesn't want to it does get airborne there for a few seconds but almost immediately the nose of the aircraft starts coming down again and, and when it does the aircraft gets back down onto the runway. The nose comes down further but the nose wheel doesn't actually get back onto the runway but instead they continue to accelerate and then eventually they do a second rotation and this time they get airborne okay, and they fly away. So what can possibly lead to something like this? What are they doing? Well. Basically, you have four different possibilities here. So if we go through them one by one, uh, we'll see which one is the most likely. The first one, which is the one that you hear most of people in the comments field talking about, is either no flap set or incorrect flap setting. So no flap set is out of the question. You can clearly see on these pictures that the uh, leading edge devices, the slats, is hanging out. So they are definitely extended. That's the, you know, the front part of the wing. And you can also see if you look very closely that the trailing edge flaps are also out, but not too much, which would indicate that they're probably taking off with flaps one here. So then incorrect flap setting. Well, sure. I mean, it is a possibility that they have calculated with the flaps five departure, but set flaps one by mistake and that they've taken off. There wouldn't be any takeoff configuration warning or anything for that. And it has happened before. But what you do have to understand then as well is that for a 737 with two engines operating, 
do, making that mistake, all by being serious, will not stop the aircraft from flying. Right. What, we, what it will do effectively is that when you rotate path, the, uh, the attitude where you should get airborne around 9 degrees, it will not get airborne. Instead, it's going to be at airborne at a later stage with a higher attitude because you, you're not at the correct speed. Okay? So you will have less tail morgan. But with an aircraft like this, shorter, you need to get up to 16 degrees attitude before you start scraping the tail. So it, it wouldn't have been dangerous in most in likely they wouldn't even have noticed it until they start to retract the flaps and realize that oh we only have flaps one we should have had flaps five and then it's a very embarrassing report that you have to write so it wouldn't have led to this so then we get to the second one which is an incorrectly trimmed aircraft okay so let's say that the aircraft has the incorrect trim setting it's too much trimmed back so the, the nose wants to get off the ground before the pilots want to do it, or that they have freight on board and the weight on balance is not correct. Well, in that case, yes, if it is extreme, you might get an aircraft that starts rotating before the pilot wants to. But if that happens, you would see it, right? You would see that the elevators push forward because the pilot knows that they don't want to rotate there. So if the aircraft starts rotating without them wanting to, they would hold, you know, they would pitch forward to keep the aircraft on the ground until the speed is correct. You don't see that. All right, the, uh, the uh, elevator is flush with the um, horizontal stabilizer. So that's not the case. So then we get to the third option. Okay, and that is the uh, aircraft is rotated at the wrong speed. Now, even though that is a possibility, it is highly unlikely. Because to rotate at a really low speed, a really low indicated speed, um, that would both feel and look very strange to the pilot. Okay, you know when to it live when you were flying this aircraft for a while, how long time it should take to reach a certain speed. And if you see or hear that the aircraft is starting to rotate very early on, the pilot monitoring, whose job it is to monitor the aircraft um, instrumentation, would look down and say, no, this is not correct. All right. And there's no way that a trained pilot would rotate below 120 knots for a normal weight. Okay, because you would intuitively know that something is wrong with that. So then you have the possibility of them setting, for example, wet speeds or slippery speeds. In that case, the V1 speed might come quite early. And V1 is the decision speed, all right? That's the highest speed that you can still reject the takeoff on. After that, you are kind of committed to the takeoff. Now, if there is a very junior, inexperienced first officer flying, um, they tend to be used to hearing V1 and rotate at the same time, because that's more or less what you get on dry runways. And if you then have done that, you know, many, 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 many times, and then all of a sudden you have a slippery takeoff or a wet takeoff where V1 comes way before rotate, well, then there is a possibility that they might start to rotate at the V1 call, right? Okay. That would be a possibility if it weren't for the fact that you would have a, a captain that would stop them from doing this. And also, it's a dry day, okay? It is not slippery and it's not wet. So very low chance of that being the case. So then we get to the fourth possibility. And the fourth possibility is some type of upset, all right? Something is happening to this aircraft as they are getting into the rotation phase of the takeoff. Now, when we take off with very strong crosswinds, especially gusty crosswinds, there is always a risk that as you're taking off and you reach your rotation speed, there is a sudden gust of wind. And if that wind turns from being straight crosswind to a little bit of tailwind, well then the speed is gonna go, the airspeed, you know, which indicates how much air is flowing out over our wings, is gonna go from the rotation speed where the aircraft can be rotated safely to below that speed. And the aircraft might not be able to fly, right? This is why in those kind of conditions, we brief the pilot monitoring to say like, okay, we have gusty winds today, that's crosswind, monitor the speed. And if you see that it's fluctuating just before rotate, just wait a little bit, hold off on the rotation call until the speed is stabilized above VR, then call it so that we don't tail strike the aircraft, okay? But the curious thing here is that that's not the wind they have, all right? You can clearly see the windsock in this video clip and you can see that it's hanging down a little bit. It is benign, very light winds. So what can then have possibly happened? Well, it turns out 
after having spent hours watching this clip, that you actually probably have the answer to that question in the clip itself. In the first couple of seconds of this video, up to about uh, second 20 or so, you can see that it's an Airbus A330 on approach to runway 07 right in Frankfurt. Okay, It lands and then you have a clip which would indicate that there's a little bit of a time delay and then the Air Maroc 737 starts rolling down. So given that you can see the Air Maroc taxiing out when the Airbus 330 is in final, you can estimate that it's probably about a minute later or so that this uh, 737 is taking off. And we know that because of all of the bad publicity that came out of this video. Air Maroc actually went out onto their official Twitter feed and said that the air crew had gotten a warning of wake turbulence by air traffic control before they departed. Right. But how can that possibly create something like this? Well, when we think of wake turbulence, and wake turbulence, by the way, is those vortices that comes out of the wingtips of aircraft all the time, but especially during takeoff and landing. It happens because there is a high pressure below the wings and a low pressure above the wings. So the air tries to escape from below the wings to on top, which means it creates these vortices. And when we hear about wake turbulence, we normally think about possible disturbances in the roll plane. Okay? Because if it happens on the same runway as you are taking off from, if a, a heavy aircraft has come in and landed before you and you come into one of these vortexes, well then it might flip you over. Something like this might happen. But if you think about it, this Airbus 330 came in to land on a runway that's almost reciprocal to runway 18. So if we take the potential kind of path of how these vortices will move, these vortices as they leave the wingtip will typically fall with about 400 feet per minute and the Airbus 330 in this video looks like it's between 400 to 600 feet above ground as it passes around with 18. Well then a minute later the vortices would have reached ground level. Okay now picture those vortices that normally disturbs you in the roll mode and then turn them 90 degrees. What could have happened then is that the vortex from the right hand wing of the Airbus A330, remember on the right hand wing, the vortex would be turning counterclockwise because it's going from under the wing to over the wing. It would have fallen down onto runway 18. And given the approach path in the runway 07 right, it's very likely that that would have ended up pretty much exactly where the Air Maroc 737 is rotating. So this crew of the Boeing 737 would have had perfectly normal indication of their airspeed as they are accelerating up for their normal takeoff. Then as they get into the rotation, they hit what's left of this vortex. And it will come as a sudden tailwind, right? That will cause the airspeed to decrease and the 737 would not be able to fly. Right? It would have lost so much speed that as they rotate up to their normal attitude, the aircraft is not taking off. Okay. The only thing that the flight crew can do at that point, because remember, they've passed V1, right? they've passed the decision speed, they're now committed to the takeoff, is to lower the nose, because they do not want to get the aircraft airborne and stall. Right? So they lower the nose, the aircraft returns down on the runway, they keep that attitude, they keep building the speed and as they do and they go further down on the runway they will then get out of this vortex as well. The airspeed will come back to them, it goes above their rotation speed and they can do a nice safe rotation and fly away. So what you're actually seeing here guys is an air crew that is handling a upset during a very critical phase of their takeoff during the rotation in a very professional way. All right, They are doing what I would do in a similar situation. They're dealing with something that you can be absolutely sure that they've never dealt with before in a nice controlled manner. You don't see any erratic movements on the flight controls. You just see the nose coming down. It's held off. It doesn't touch down. The nose continues, accelerates, and then does a nice slow rotation and it climbs away. And something that further kind of makes me 
think that we're dealing with some really professional air crew here is that in the Twitter response that Air Maroc put out, it says clearly that the crew of the landing immediately reported this incident, which is something that we would do. All right? If we come across something that is unusual, even though it might not have caused any uh, damage to the aircraft, any injuries or anything like that, we would report it so that that information can go back to Frankfurt Main Airport and say that, listen, you did warn about um, potential uh, wake turbulence. We experienced this. Think about potentially extending the period of time before you clear for takeoff in a situation that is similar to this. Right? This is how we deal with things in the aviation world. And these guys clearly follow the same path. So I found this fascinating. All right? I thoroughly enjoyed watching this video. If you have more videos like this that you want my take on, well then contact me. Okay, you can send them in to news at mentorpilot.com. That's our official kind of tip hotline. Uh, or you can contact me on Twitter, um, on Instagram, obviously. You can put it into the uh, comment section here on YouTube or get the free Mentor Aviation app. All right. Or go into my, uh, to my Discord server. That works as well. No matter how you do it, it doesn't matter. I love hearing from you guys. Send it in. I hope that I have um, kind of earned a subscription for you. If you like videos like this, make sure you've subscribed and that you've highlighted the notification bell so that you know when I'm sending out new special videos on things that might happen in the aviation business. That's it, guys. Next week, I will continue my series about famous air crashes investigation. It is a, a fairly terrible crash that we're going to be covering, but a very important one from a safety perspective. So until then, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.